Well, good evening, all. Uh, this is the third webinar on regenerative medicine and biologics. Um, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank Shannon O'Kelly and IRG for inviting me back once again to, to do another webinar. Um, tonight, uh, what we're going to be talking about is non-surgical treatment for knee disorders, um, knee osteoarthritis and meniscus tears, as well as a few other things, which I will kind of go over here shortly. Um, a little bit about myself. Uh, I've been practicing actually 35 years, uh, sports medicine, orthopedics in Seattle. I'm the founder of Seattle Sports and Regenerative Medicine. Uh, I was the senior partner and medical director at the Sports Medicine Clinic for many, many years. Uh, I was at University of Washington um, for quite some time, as well as a consulting team doc for the Mariner, um, and then just a few certifications listed below um, are, are noted on the slide. So <clears throat> the knee condition Okay, um, so the knee conditions that, that we treat with biologics, or in other words, stem cells, osteoarthritis, so wear and tear, uh, arthritis on joints, old injuries, surgeries, genetics. Um, there are also other conditions like rheumatoid arthritis and such that can cause significant arthritis in the joint. Um, we also treat what are called OCDs or osteochondral defects. These are very focal areas that are like craters or holes within the cartilage. We see them in young individuals. We see them in skeletally immature individuals as well as adults. And they're kind of almost like osteoarthritis, but on a more focal um, scale. Meniscus tears, We've been treating meniscus tears for a number of years. Just isolated meniscus tears don't, don't necessarily need to be in combination with arthritis. Partial ACL tears. Complete ACL tears, we are not going to be able to bridge the gap created by a complete ACL tear with stem cells. So complete ACL tears, I send to the surgeons uh, to reconstruct. However, partial ACL tears, we see phenomenal results uh, with biologics. Chondromalacia, this is oftentimes noted behind the kneecap. It's a grinding, it's, it's uh, patients sense, sense a, a grinding type sensation. It's where the cartilage or that Teflon covering behind the kneecap oftentimes is breaking down. And it can happen throughout the knee, but it's not to the point yet where it's become quote unquote osteoarthritis. Synovitis, which is basically inflammation uh, in a joint and patellar tendonitis, which is the tendon at the bottom part of the kneecap when it becomes severely inflamed, or sometimes we even see partial tears there. We treat those with biologics uh, very well also. All right, so what is regenerative medicine? It's the field of study that utilizes your body's own stem cells to heal and regenerate damaged tissue. The way I do it is use of autologous, meaning from your own body, a particular type of stem cell that's called a mesenchymal stem cell because those stem cells can grow up, per se, to become bone, cartilage, muscle, and tendon. We don't want embryonic cells. We don't want pluripotent cells. We just want these particular stem cells. The stem cell itself is an unspecialized cell in the body, and it has the ability to renew themselves and also transform into different type cell types within the body. I just have a short, like three or four minute video here that, that is a very simplistic, but it's a very good view of stem cell therapy. So I'm gonna start this now. What is stem cell therapy? Stem cell therapy is an injection treatment designed to heal injuries and reduce pain. It is used for arthritis, 
and injuries to ligaments, tendons, muscles, cartilage, and bone. First, let's look at the difference between human embryonic stem cells and adult stem cells. The embryonic stem cells are pluripotent, meaning that they can become of any of the more than 200 known differentiated cell types of the human body. On the other hand, adult stem cells are multipotent, meaning that they can develop into more than one cell type, but are more limited and controlled, and thus safer than pluripotent cells. We perform the adult stem cell treatment. What is the role of these stem cells? To understand this better, let's look at this example. Your house is exposed to different elements, such as wind, fire, rain, sun, and time. All cause damage to the structure. To keep your house in order and repair any damage, you need different professionals like firefighters, construction workers, insurance agents, and a contractor to supervise and direct the project. This is no different than your personal life. You need a dentist, lawyer, financial advisor, doctors, insurance agent, and a barber, along with other professionals. So, both your house and your life require different professionals and specialists to keep them working well. And your body needs stem cells. Now, let's dive deeper and see what happens to your joints. In a normal healthy joint, you have plenty of stem cells. These cells are not only capable of doing maintenance and repairs, they also know when and where these repairs are needed. The stem cells work as a contractor that, in addition to giving instruction for repairs and maintenance, can transform into specialized cells to do whatever is needed to fix any problem. When you have enough of these stem cells, there's a balance between damage and repair, and you have no pain and no injuries. Think about when you were 18 years old. You were able to run, jump, and do the same the next day without pain. The only problem is that with time, the number of these stem cells goes down, or sometimes the severity of the injury or damage is more than the ability of your body to repair it. This leads to an imbalance and ultimately leads to arthritis, injuries, and pain. In essence, as you age, you have a lower number of contractors and workers available to do the job or sometimes the amount of damage is too much for the available stem cells. But fortunately, there are areas of your body that keep a good number of stem cells. These areas include the bone marrow of the hips and the fat in your abdomen and buttocks. And this is the key to stem cell therapy. The doctor will take stem cells from one or both of these areas and transfer them to the area of injury or arthritis. This will provide the stem cells needed for repair. In essence, the treatment will supply the manpower needed to do the job. Once there, these cells secrete growth factors that will organize and coordinate other cells to do the repairs. This leads to healing. This is like the contractor giving instructions to get the job done. This treatment can be used for pain with injuries coming from ligaments, tendons, muscles, bones, cartilage, and meniscus. When is it useful? If you have an injury or an arthritic condition that did not improve with therapy, medication, other injections, or surgery, or if you were told you need surgery, then stem cells is a great option for you. Thanks for watching. So, where is that? How do I get to? I can't find the um, PowerPoint. with you in a second here. We're just trying to get back onto the uh, PowerPoint.
should be back on in just a second. A um, little technical difficulty here. Okay, so let me go down. So when we were all about 10 years of age, we had over 200 million stem cells circulating around throughout our body. Um, when you hit age 60, that number drops into the hundreds of thousands and it it's, it dim rapidly diminishes um, with age. However, there are these localized areas, which they talked about in that little video, um, primarily being long bones and also your pelvic bones, where we've got this great store of stem cells. The other place where we see a lot of stem cells in adipose tissue or fat tissue. Um, so that's kind of, that's where we harvest the cells from. Um, so the other option that, that oftentimes people are, are basically trying to make a decision between a major surgical or reconstructive procedure or biologics is that of total joint replacements. So when we talk about total joint replacements uh, for knees, 65 to 70% of patients who have those are satisfied with their results. However, that means that 30% or so are not so happy. And there, there are issues as far as patients having increased pain afterwards and uh, just not being able to get back to you know, the activity or the lifestyle that they were, were hoping for. It, it is a big surgery. It's a lengthy recovery and, and uh, rehab uh, process. And it is an end game. So if you have a total knee replacement and you don't end up with a good result, there's really not much else we can do. I probably see two patients a month who come to see me because of a failed total knee replacement and they're just not happy, they're miserable with the results. And they're coming to see me because they would like to do stem cells for their knees. Well, unfortunately it's too late at that point. You know, there's not much we can do when all you've got in there is metal and plastic. The other thing that we can potentially see with total knee replacements, there's always a a chance of infection, which can be a real mess, a real disaster, and sometimes have to pull the prosthesis out and wait till the infection is treated fully before you can put another one in. Uh, blood clots, which can then lead to the blood clot going to the lungs, which is called a pulmonary emboli. Um, it's a big surgery. There's a lot of bleeding. Subsequently, there's a lot of clotting, and there's always a risk of heart attack or stroke. The prostheses do not last forever and they can loosen and then they have to be redone and, and revisions don't necessarily do as well as the, as the first procedure. There is some talk about metallosis, so chromium, cobalt, nickel, and titanium, which leach into the, can leach into the system. And although there's no documented evidence, you know, that there's issues with dementia, um, there's been some suggestion that there may be. Um, the other thing is that all of these potential complications are increased when your body mass index is over 30. So uh, that's why oftentimes many surgeons say, hey, you know, you got to lose 50 pounds, you got to lose 100 pounds before we'll even consider doing surgery. Um, for stem cell transplants or biologics, um, it's a fairly easy pre-procedure um, directions. So what we have patients do is avoid non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, ibuprofen, Advil, um, CBD, turmeric for one week prior to the procedure. We also have them make sure they hydrate really well for two or three days before the procedure. Um, we want to make sure that patients are not on blood thinners, um, which maybe they're on because they had a blood clot or maybe they have atrial fibrillation. If that's the case, we need to see if they can go off them for a few days, depending upon which one they're on. And I oftentimes we'll talk to the patient's cardiologist, internist, or, or the patient can talk to them to see if that's an option. Or if it's not, then there are some other things that, that we can do. 
The procedure itself involves drawing blood and then we isolate out what's called, or we centrifuge out the, the blood which layers out into the Buffy coat. We pipette off the Buffy coat, which is all platelets. And platelets are pure and simple fertilizer for stem cells. We then do bone marrow extraction, um, which we do in the posterior superior iliac crest. Okay, that's a lot of words for, basically it's the area. You have your spine that comes down in the middle of your back and on both sides, you've got your pelvis. That's where we go get the bone. It sounds horrible. It's, I've done over 20,000 of them. Literally takes me less than one minute to get all the bone marrow that I need out of that area of the bone. Um, and then we do a mini liposuction, kind of in the flank area or the love handle area. And then all of those cells go through individual processes through a, a very highly specialized centrifuge. And then we end up with three syringes, one of stem cells from bone marrow, one of stem cells from adipose, and one of platelets. Then under ultrasound guidance, we inject those into the knee joint. It's one needle and then, but we switch out the syringes in between. And oftentimes people ask, well, why don't you just mix it all together? It's gonna all end up in the, in the same place anyhow. The FDA doesn't like us to do that. So we, we keep things separate. Okay. Um, so who, who does not get stem cells? Basically, if somebody has active cancer, has been treated with chemotherapy, um, if they have, with the exception of prostate cancer, and it's on an individual basis, and I oftentimes will talk to the patient's oncologist, and uh, that's something we need, to, we just need to look at. Um, it's not necessarily that there's a history of cancer, it's just that does anybody have an active um, process that's going on that they're undergoing treatment for? Certainly infection, um, if somebody's got some ongoing systemic infection, we want to deal with that first. And as we talked about earlier, uh, the blood thinners are, are an issue that we need to address as well. Um, unfortunately, there, there are a lot of bad actors out there, people who are doing procedures that shouldn't be and using cells that come from elsewhere. Uh, there, there are groups of... I guess uh, not physicians necessarily, but other providers who basically are doing stem cell transplants with cells that they buy online. Most of it comes from Mexico, comes from patients who are willing to sell their placentas. Um, amniotic fluid is, is, a, is a big product that people are using out there. We know that amniotic fluid has zero live stem cells. Um, I, I'm, I just urge patients to be really careful about, you know, if they hear somebody advertising um, that they're doing these injections and it's better to use somebody else's young stem cells. I mean, we do, we've done hundreds of patients in their mid nineties who are doing just great. Um, so you don't wanna get those cells from, from elsewhere. And you wanna make sure that the provider, the physician who is doing the procedure has done a lot of them, that they're a medical doctor that they are board certified. Um, you want to avoid those providers that are not. Okay, so the results. Patients who have mild to moderately severe osteoarthritis, big data says 85% of those patients get at least 80% improvement. In my population, and we have done now over 20,000 patients, and this is across the boards. This is patients with mild all the way to severe osteoarthritis. At least 75% or at least 91% of those patients um, realize at least 75% improvement in pain and in function. Um, I've thrown in just a kind of a, a few synopses from uh, scientific journals and some clinical studies. Um, first one from the Journal, journal of uh, Bone and Joint Surgery the American Journal of Bone and Joint Surgery, says there was evidence of meniscus regeneration and improvement in knee pain following treatment with human mesenchymal stem cells. 
These results support the study of human mesenchymal stem cells for the apparent knee tissue regeneration and protective effects. From the Journal of Clinical Orthopedics and Trauma, the versatility of stem cells as a treatment modality has landed it another repair target, osteoarthritis. Through many studies, this newly discovered method has been shown to significantly alleviate the pain experienced by the osteoarthritic patient. From Helion, this study shows that a single intraarticular injection, in other words, injection into a joint of bone marrow stem cells appears to provide long-term benefits. The procedure is simple, fast, well-tolerated, avoids the need for hospitalization and generated no complications or adverse effects. So the procedure itself takes about an hour. Um, it's local anesthetic, patients walk out, they do need a ride, and they start physical therapy three to five days later. Um, activities of daily living, you did start that first day. Usually we've got patients on like a stationary bike and elliptical in the second week, and then we're progressing back to activity. By six weeks, we get most people back to easy golf, easy hiking, easy skiing on groomers. And by 12 weeks, I tell patients that we pretty much can get back to whatever feels good. Improvement tends to continue out to about a year. There's some data out of Japan that says two years, and then we tend to level off at a new set point. From the Journal of Orthopedic Translation, Volume 9, in contrast to traditional treatments based on drugs, proteins, or antibodies, stem cells are poised to revolutionize medicine as they possess the capacity to replace and repair tissues and organs such as osteoarthritic joints. From Nature, the British Scientific Journal, in conclusion, mesenchymal stem cell treatment improves knee pain, physical function, and cartilage quality without any severe adverse events. From mesenchymal stem cells and regenerative medicine, cartilage mapping by MRI showed evidence of improvement in the good cartilage quality and significant decrease in poor cartilage quality. Um, just some other studies that I just, uh, at two years, there were some, some studies done, not large studies, but 15 patients where we went back in with a scope and looked inside the joint to see um, basically what had happened. And, and on this study by uh, Gabi in 2011, basically second year or second look arthroscopy at two years, showed that there was smooth, newly formed tissue and it's native cartilage, it's not scar cartilage. Um, this was just a, a study that, that shows BMAC is bone marrow aspirate. This is actually, it's an ankle joint, it should be in another lecture, but basically it just shows that doing uh, microfracture surgery, which is oftentimes done for what we call osteochondral defects, where you drill holes into the, into the defect in hopes that a blood clot fills it in and that there's some stem cells that can lay down new cartilage. And you can see in this first slide where the yellow is on the joint space, that's after uh, microfracture surgery. You can still, there's still, you can see there's still a very large defect, as opposed to when you do bone marrow aspirate, which is stem cells, you can see that defect uh, filling in at 12 months. So as far as safety of the procedure, there are now close to 20 million cases done in the United States. As long as you use your own cells, or we use your own cells, there has not been a single serious adverse event reported on the FDA database. Once again, no general anesthesia, it's local anesthesia. We do give patients some pain meds uh, ahead of time. Um, and once again, they walk out, but do need a ride. Uh, afterwards, basically the RICE acronym, rest, ice, compression, elevation for the first 24 to 48 hours, but we want people walking around. We don't want people just you know, immobilizing uh, the joint. Um, we do avoid anti-inflammatories for six weeks afterwards. 
we like to start physical therapy fairly quickly. It's very important. And that's kind of a, in a nutshell, you know, stem cells for, for knee disorders. Well, I'm trying to listen to this. Okay. And um, so I've got, we're going to open this up for questions now. I do already have uh, a list of questions. I was just going to kind of go through some of these and, and, uh, and try to answer those. Um, so Karen French uh, asked, what can be done about pain and stiffness in hips and knees? I mean, the procedure, we do more knees than, than any joint, um, followed by hips and shoulders, works uh, equally well for pretty much any joint. Um, we even do, the smallest joints we do are like thumb joints and big toe joints. Um, Kate asks, she says she's in her early 50s. She has arthritic pain in the knees. It affects her ability to ski and do other sports and activities that I love. How can I take good care of my knees so I can live an active and pain-free lifestyle? Um, so here's the big, the big takeaway is the earlier you jump on these issues, if you can catch osteoarthritis when it's mild or mild to moderate, the results are significantly better than if you wait to when it's really severe. So I love when patients come in, they've just got mild changes because oftentimes, you know, it's a one and done procedure and we don't ever have to talk about, you know, surgery uh, in the future. Um, Edith is uh, looking for information on stem cell uh, transplants and the goal of avoiding knee replacement surgery. I have osteoarthritis, one knee is bone on bone. I've had previous shots and also surgery on both knees to clean out arthritic spurs. Okay, so when you do surgery on an arthritic joint, basically, and, and this is something that we've done, has been done for years, but not so much recently, because if you have an arthritic joint and you go in for to do what's called like a clean out procedure, basically there's about a 15% chance you'll be better at one year. And there's a very significant chance that you'll be worse at one year because arthroscopy tends to flare up and accelerate the arthritic change uh, within a joint. Um, so in order to, to avoid knee replacement surgery, uh, I would suggest having the knees evaluated. Oftentimes patients think that they're bone on bone. And when we actually look at their films, they're not necessarily bone on bone. Um, Leslie talks about a torn meniscus in a right knee, um, painful swells, especially when exercises, uh, specifically while riding a horse. I actually actually saw a patient today who's a big equestrian. She's three months out from stem cells for arthritis and meniscus tear. I want to say she's probably about the same age. She may be a year or two older, but she's back to horseback riding now. So works very well for isolated meniscus uh, tears. And I usually get patients back, to, back on a horse in about six weeks. Um, Virginia states she has arthritis in my hips and SI joints interested in learning what I can do, taking several supplements. So hips, uh, orthobiologics work very well and in SI joints. Now, sometimes in sacroiliac joints, I will just do PRP, which is platelets. It all depends what those joints look like. Uh, so that would be something that certainly we, we could evaluate. Um, DJ mentions that both knees seem to think or they, they ache on a daily basis. Um, damage to my meniscus in the right knee, but settled down with PT, but it's flared up. Twisting and turning is not good. So the only time that I, I tell patients that, that I don't think stem cells would be an appropriate treatment for the, their meniscus tear is if they have a certain type of tear that's called a bucket handle tear. And that's if it starts to cause locking in the knee or mechanical symptoms, then oftentimes you need to go in and take out that piece. Um, but otherwise, we see very, very good results um, by treating men meniscus tears with biologics. Um, let's see. So once again, somebody else asked bone on bone. Like I said, oftentimes, it's not necessarily bone on bone. There may be areas within the joint where there's a crack or a fissure that goes through that Teflon covering down to the bone. But once again, like I said, I bet about 95% of the time that patients think that they're bone on bone, we look at the, the x-rays or the MRI and there, there is actually fairly reasonable joint space. 
Um, Roger asks, how many treatments are usually needed? The hope is one and done. Every once in a while, we'll put some more platelets in at some point in the future if patients uh, need it. Um, let's see. So main issue, sit in a squatted position. Oh, squat, you know, squatted position is tough on the knees, especially if you have osteoarthritis. Um, and might be a very good candidate. Once again, it's something that we need to take a look at images and, uh, and examine the knees and see. Certainly if, if somebody comes in and, and I just don't think they're a good candidate, whether it be because of the degree of osteoarthritis they have or any other conditions, we're not gonna do the procedure. And I, I'll probably end up you know, referring you to a surgeon if I feel that, that that's appropriate. Um, so yeah, 79 year old, somebody asked about a 79 year old mother. Uh, certainly I've, we've done well over a hundred patients in their mid nineties who are doing just fine. Um, somebody's talking about Synvisc injection. Synvisc is like, it's like putting motor oil in the knee. Um, it's a, what we call viscoelastic supplementation. It tends to work for about 50% of patients and it tends to last you know, about six months. Sometimes I have people that go out to a year. It doesn't actually regenerate cartilage, but it lubricates the joint. Um, so let me see, I got a few more and then we'll go to some of the other ones that people are sending in. Uh, st is stem cell treatment for meniscus tears a permanent solution? Yes. Um, had a patient, actually another patient in today who came in for a new injury, working on a crab boat up in Alaska, um, new injury to his knee. We did his knee three years ago for an isolated meniscus tear. And so we just happened to get another MRI. And not only was he pain-free prior to this other injury, but the MRI showed complete resolution, complete healing of his meniscus tear. Um, so let's see. So somebody asked in, uh, in the brochure, it talks about great promise. Basically, I just can go back to the numbers that 91% of our patients are at least 75% improved. And that's with pain and with being able to do more with less discomfort. Um, so, and then somebody else asks, I've had pain for several years. I've had an x-ray once in Seattle for pain. They found nothing on the image. I fell on my deck two years ago. Had another extra, <laughs> um, showed nothing. The doctor told me not to wear long skirts. <laughs> so um, I would say, you know, in that case, uh, if I didn't see anything on the x-ray, the next step is to get an MRI because the x-ray doesn't see the meniscus tears. It doesn't see necessarily early damage to that articular cartilage. And so, I, I mean, definitely would, would want to do um, an, an MRI. So now other questions. Okay, I've got a list of some more here. Okay, so somebody asks, they said their medial meniscus was removed 40 years ago. It was torn completely loose, floating and free and jammed into the joint. All tendons torn loose in a skiing accident. Uh, can stem cells help? Trying to avoid total replacement. Once again, this would be something that examining the knee, looking at the images, the, the x-ray and or MRI, depending upon what x-ray shows, sometimes we don't need to get an MRI, um, but certainly, I mean, this is a very typical patient that we, that we treat. We see a ton of skiers um, uh, from all over the world who come to have the procedure done because of injuries from skiing. Um, so yeah, that would be something certainly would be worth setting up a consultation and, and uh, taking a look at. All right, now I'm gonna look, okay. Um, okay, when Dr. Wagner says board certified, is any specific board or just medical board? I've never asked my doctors if they are board certified. Okay, so um, yeah, so there are different specialties. My, my specialty is sports medicine, so it's non-surgical orthopedics and also primary care. So I'm board certified in, in both of those. Um, but, you know, board certified, you know, orthopedic surgeon, board certified internist, board certified somebody who's in physical medicine and rehab. So it can be 
any specialty as long as they've then spent a significant amount of time and training in, in, in ultrasound and guided injections and, and treatment with um, uh, stem cells. All right, Steve says, I'm very active and healthy, skiing, beach volleyball, and hiking, 60-year-old male with no pre-existing health conditions, uh, who has been told I'm currently a candidate for sh full shoulder replacement. I have zero cartilage anymore, bone on bone, lots of arthritis, and I'm in a lot of pain. I've done two cortisone shots. I'm delaying replacement surgery as long as possible. Um, you most likely uh, are a good candidate for stem cells How? just because the options are not great. A total shoulder replacement in somebody who is a big skier, beach volleyball player, um, it, you, it's not something you're gonna be happy with um, and they don't last uh, very long. So certainly um, I have I've done a ton of shoulders. There's also a, a webinar if you look up on YouTube on uh, for me on shoulders. Um, uh, we just we have a a ton of active patients. Actually, the first patient, so the first or the second patient I ever did about eight years ago was a shoulder. It was my contractor, a uh, seventy year old guy, very active, worked seven days a week. Horrible osteoarthritis. Uh, chronic rotator cuff tear, labrum tear, couldn't lift his arm up past about 45, 50 degrees. I sent him to one of my partners at, when I was at UW and, um, or actually at ProLiance and, and uh, partner sent him back to me and said, Mark, if I do a total shoulder replacement on this guy, he's going to hate me for the rest of his life. Um, so then my contractor said to me, he goes, doc, what about stem cells? I said, geez, Bob, your, your shoulder's a mess. He said, you know what? I, I want to do it. I don't care if it's a 25% chance of me getting better. Well, he's now eight years out, still working general contracting. He has full range of motion at his shoulder. He has no pain anymore when he sleeps, which he couldn't sleep for more than a half an hour without pain. And he tells me the only time he gets pain is if he's working overhead for more than about 15 minutes with a pneumatic nail gun. So it's a very good option uh, for, for shoulders, for sure. Uh, then Jess, Jeff asks about wrist joints. Yes, I do a lot. I've actually done had my own thumbs done at the base of my thumbs. But we do a lot of wrists, a lot of uh, what's called the first CMC joint, which is the big, the big joint at the base of the thumb. Um, and once again, works extremely well. Why doesn't the FDA approve the procedure? Um, the FDA has been extremely busy with COVID. Um, it takes a long time for the FDA to approve procedures. It took them 15 years to approve the anterior uh, approach for hip replacement surgery, which is now the standard. Um, and, and there's good and there's bad to that. I mean, you know, it's approved uh, in other countries. It is approved for treatment of certain uh, cancers, leukemia, lymphoma. It's approved for um, wound healing, and it is approved uh, when it's used intraoperatively. Uh, intra um, unfortunately, the procedure is not covered um, by Medicare. It's not covered by any insurers. Um, physical therapy is, follow-ups are, but the actual procedure is not. Um, so what's the difference between PRP and stem cells? PRP is platelet-rich plasma. It ultimately helps the body to mount a, a healing process and ultimately decreases inflammation. Um, I use PRP a lot when I'm treating tendonitis. I use PRP a lot when I'm treating, I'll tell you where PRP works really good in knees, women runners. I see a ton of women runners who come to see me because they've had knee pain for years. They've had physical therapy. Some have had scopes. They've had normal MRIs. They've had cortisone injections and they come to me for stem cells. And I say, you know what? We don't need to do stem cells. We can just do PRP. And boy, I tell you, I bet a hundred percent of those patients get better and do just fine. Um, but for any time that there's pathology on the MRI, a tear in the meniscus, an osteochondral defect, osteoarthritis, then you want to do stem cells and PRP. How about post-procedure diet? So for that six weeks afterwards, sometimes people say, hey, what should I, should I 
start on an anti-inflammatory diet? No, we want inflammation after the procedure because that's how your body heals. So we need that inflammation. After six weeks, I'm fine for anybody to do whatever they want to do. We don't want people to go on crash diets that, you know, six weeks to 12 weeks afterwards, because those cells need nutrition. So if people need to lose weight, we're going to work on that, but we're going to wait a little bit of time because we, we still need to get adequate nutrition. in. Um, once again, uh, our insurance companies covering the procedure. No, they are not. Um, somebody says, I had the HUC stem cell therapy and it didn't work. I don't know what HUC, unless it's umbilical cord. If it's umbilical cord, I'm not surprised it didn't work because there are no live stem cells there. Um, then Margo asks, how do you separate the stem cells out of the bone marrow aspirate versus the harvested fat prior to injection? So it is a very complicated, specialized uh, proprietary software system that runs our centrifuges that was developed actually uh, by a fellow who ran the molecular biology department at Stanford. And um, it is, I don't even begin to understand the physics behind it, um, but in the space of about 15 to 20 minutes, we're going to get between, you know, two and or anywhere between one and four billion stem cells that we then um, inject back into the um, Let's see, what x-rays are required before an appointment? So if a patient has films that were done somewhere else, we, we always tell people before they come for a consultation, bring those films, bring the films and the reports, or if they can't get a hold of the films, at least the reports, um, whether it be an x-ray or MRI. Um, we can do x-rays at the office in a matter of minutes. We don't have an MRI scanner at the office, but we can set one up. Um, we have plenty of facilities that we send people to. Um, so x-rays, once again, if you haven't had x-rays, we can do them at the office. And if then somebody needs an MRI, we can usually get it done within a few days. Uh, then we have Pamela who said she's 77. Recently diagnosed with mild to moderate knee osteoarthritis, had one injection a few months ago of a steroid. Uh, the doctor spoke about plasma, but didn't mention the stem cells. He was going to start with Synvisc because insurance covers it. Um, yeah, so I don't like doing steroid injections in weight-bearing joints. Um, at best, it may give you a few months of relief, but what it does in the long run is it actually ends up breaking down the cartilage um, and advancing the arthritis um, even more so. Um, once again, the, 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 the viscoelastic injections, it's kind of like putting motor oil. I do those. They're not going to regenerate cartilage, um, and, but sometimes we do them as a supplement to, to the uh, actual biologic procedure. Um, so how much difference would stem cells have versus PRP for meniscus tears? What PRP does for meniscus tears, it doesn't actually heal the tear, but it can take away the pain associated with the tear. Now, there are a lot of people walking around that have meniscus tears in their knees and have no pain whatsoever. So with small tears in the meniscus, sometimes we'll just treat them with PRP. And if patients do fine, great. Then we, we may not need to do stem cells. All right, I've got another one here. Large multiple tears to the lateral meniscus of the right knee and mild arthritis. One steroid injection. Good candidate for biologics? Absolutely. Don't have any more cortisone injections. Um, and then somebody asked about the cost. The cost depends on the, the joint um, large, small joints, multiple joints, and it's, it's somewhere between usually five and ten thousand dollars. I think that is all the questions, right? You don't have any others over there. Um, so yeah, I'd say a lot of these people, it's you know, I, I I don't have a blanket answer to say yes, no, you know, you're a candidate or not, but definitely, I, if you're interested, I would set up a consultation. Um, at our office, Seattle Sports Medicine, or I'm sorry, Seattle Sports and Regenerative Medicine. 
Um, okay, we have a, another couple of questions look like. Um, when am I having a session for ankle treatment? I'll probably do one at some point in the future. We do a ton of ankles. I actually did three today. Um, the problem with ankles is that your only options are a, oftentimes a fusion or an ankle replacement. And the replacements just don't last long at all. And the fusions are, well, they're basically, you got a stiff ankle in for the rest of your life. Um, somebody said, does it work for ITBS? Um, shoot me back um, a text or an email and tell me what you're referring to on ITBS. Um, and then somebody else said, how is what you do similar to or different from Regenex? Um, Regenex, I believe they're just do either bone marrow or fat. I don't think they do both. Um, they were treating adipose with um, enzymes and, and getting what's called, it's called stromal vascular fraction. It, basically that's manipulating stem cells. And the, the FDA a number of years ago said that that's a big no-no. And they, they did get slapped with some big fines and they moved a lot of their um, clinics to uh, the Cayman Islands. But they are, they are back in the United States doing um, procedures. I just don't know exactly uh, what they do. They, they are kind of franchised and um, they, they do whatever the, you know, the, the, the governing body tells them that, that has to be done. Um, I just don't know a lot about what they're doing right now. Um, let's see. Um, I, I asked about, I told you about the cost at, at uh, between five and 10. Um, and then somebody is, is this technique use, is this technique use an approved IRB protocol? Shoot me back and, and tell me what you are referring to with IRB. Um, for thumb osteoarthritis, somebody asks, um, depends on the extent. I usually just do bone marrow because it's not, it's not a big joint. I don't put fat or adipose into a thumb joint. I usually just do bone marrow aspirin. Um, and I, I'm eight years out on my thumbs and they're, they're doing fabulous. I, I'm 100% on my right. I'd say I'm 85% on my left. Um, so is there a place for stem cells and spinal osteoarthritis? Yes, there is. Um, I don't do spine. I am just way too busy doing joints. Um, there's a, I, I really don't think there's anybody that's great here in the Northwest for spine. I have a guy down in San Diego who I uh, refer a lot of patients to. He's a, a neurosurgeon down there. And that's something you can contact our office and we're happy to give you that information. Um, can, ACL, can an ACL be repaired along with getting stem cell treatment for lack of a meniscus? Um, so in other words, I, I'm thinking that you're referring to having an ACL uh, reconstruction surgically and then I, I, I don't, I, don't, I guess I, I need a little more information on that. Um, and I've got a question. I'm a 40 year old marathon runner, had hip arthroscopy in August and November to correct femoral acetabular impingement, which caused small labral tears. Currently I can hike, lift, ski, and jump rope. However, I'm unable to run longer than three miles at a slow pace on a treadmill without hurting for days. Would stem cell therapy be an option so I can return to long distance running? Um, if there's just basically some mild arthritis and maybe some minimal changes in the labrum, then certainly you might be a very good candidate. Now, I don't know as far as long distance running. Certainly, I, I always tell patients, it's not a matter as oftentimes whether or not you can get back to running. It's just like, how long do we want that joint to last? So, I mean, I, I usually tell people, well, I wouldn't all of a sudden at this point start, you know, training for the Boston or, you know, New York City Marathon. I did have one patient, however, I can tell you a guy who I did uh, probably seven or eight years ago. He's a ultra distant, ultra marathoner. And his goal was to 
complete the uh, Western States 100 in under 24 hours. We did his knees. His knees looked terrible. It was disaster. But, you know, he said, Doc, this is my bucket list thing. I got to do it. So, and he did. He trained for two years. He made it within 24 hours. Came back to see me a, a year after that. Showed me his gold buckle that he got for that. Um, and said, Doc, he goes, if I promise you I'm done running, will you do my knees again? He goes, they got me through this race. And yeah, I, we did his knees. Now he's cycling and he's doing just great. Um, our waiting list. You know, the nice thing about we, I built out an office in South Lake Union and it's just myself and staff. So we can usually get people in. We don't have to wait on an OR time or anything like that. So we can usually get people in within two or three weeks. Um, oh, uh, iliotibial band syndrome. For iliotibial band syndrome, I don't do stem cells. I usually just do platelets or, or PRP um, right underneath kind of in the area where the band is rubbing back and forth across the bone. And um, it usually forms a painful bursa in that area. And in those patients, usually PRP does, does the trick. Um, uh, let's see. So how long can you have stem cells in the knee from, well, if you're on prolia, how long can you have stem cells in the knee from stem cells in the hips? Do aromatase inhibitor? No, they don't affect. So the main thing that, that we don't want patients on is anti-inflammatories, steroids, um, obviously blood thinners. And um, oftentimes, you know, people forget about things like, like um, uh, CBD, you know, oils and creams and topical anti-inflammatories and also turmeric. So we like people to stay off of turmeric uh, for that six weeks. Um, oh, okay, back a little more clarification on that ACL. My ACL needs to be replaced or reconnected. I don't have much meniscus left and hope to regenerate more. Um, if your ACL is completely gone, the stem cells are not going to regenerate that ligament. If it's a partial tear, then yes, it, you might be a candidate. Certainly um, for the meniscus, um, if, if your meniscus has been removed in the past, it's not going to regenerate all that meniscal tissue. If there's tears, then oftentimes yes. And then it all depends on, you know, if your ACL is gone and your meniscus is gone, you probably have damage to that Teflon covering of the joint, the articular cartilage. And then definitely that is, that is something where the stem cells are going to make a significant difference. Um, oh, then clarification on IRB. It is the Institutional Review Board for Procedures Under Research and not yet approved by the FDA but allows FDA to have oversight. So the procedure is considered FDA investigational. Um, and basically it's just not FDA cleared um, as of yet. And that's why most, you know, or all insurances don't, don't cover it. But it's being done at all major centers across the country, places like Mayo Clinic, Cleveland Clinic, the, the two largest, most well-respected uh, orthopedic clinics in the country, Curl and Job and Stedman, all doing stem cells, major universities everywhere, and, and their clinics, associated clinics, are all doing biologics. I think that is all the questions. Um, so I'd like to thank everybody uh, for tuning in. And, and once again, if you have other questions, you know, feel free to reach out to us at the office and shoot us an email or, or you know, ask questions. Or if you want, you could uh, schedule a, a consultation. Thank you and uh, hope everybody has a wonderful evening. And I'll think about putting together an ankle uh, webinar at some point in the future and probably small joints as well. Bye-bye.